The Document Strategy Podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Visit audibletrial.com slash document for a free audiobook download and a free trial membership. Choose from over 150,000 audiobooks. Get your free download at audibletrial.com slash document. Welcome to the Document Strategy Podcast, reaching worldwide to talk to thought leaders and subject matter experts about document and customer communication strategies that make a difference. Innovations, approaches, and technologies that help save money, build revenue, and improve company performance. I'm your host, Kevin Crane. Welcome to the show. We've got two great guests today. I'll be visiting with Roger Kay, a columnist at Forbes.com and an expert in transformative business technologies. Roger was a guest some time back discussing electronic signatures, and now he's returned to discuss mobile and multi-channel technologies, things he calls digital endpoints, and how they're shaping the way we communicate today. That'll be in the second half, but first I'll be speaking with Pat McGrew, a product evangelist at HP and a well-known document industry expert and reporter. Pat's a frequent guest on the show, often reporting to us from various industry events, but this time I've asked Pat to visit with her HP hat on to discuss evolving technologies from HP, especially with respect to their inkjet high-speed production printers and solutions. So, a little bit of printing, a little bit of digital multi-channel, all of that and more in the broadcast today. So, stick around. We'll be right back with this episode of the Document Strategy Podcast. Promotional consideration for this episode has been provided by Hewlett Packard and their Inkjet High Speed Production Solutions Division. For more information, visit hp.com. Since 1995, Crawford Technologies has been the driving force behind high volume transactional customer communications for many of the world's top organizations, and their solutions are the products of choice for corporations and service bureaus around the globe. Visit CrawfordTech.com for more information. That's CrawfordTech.com. You're listening to the Document Strategy Podcast. I'm pleased to welcome Pat McGrew to the broadcast today. Pat is a product evangelist with HP and their high-speed inkjet production printer division, She's also a well-known industry analyst, reporter, and entrepreneur. Pat, welcome to the show. What is going on with HP these days? Kevin, the really fun thing about HP is that it's this really massive entity. Uh, I think most people know HP as the maybe the label that's on the back of their laptop or their desktop PC. They might know them for the scanners and desktop printers and, and uh, a whole variety of, of consumer goods. But, of course, we do have this massive um, entity. Uh, industrial division, if you will, that uh, powers, well, the cloud. Um, if you've ever heard of the cloud or maybe you uh, participate in the cloud, maybe you've made a reservation on an airline system, you're using part of the HP cloud. Um, and, and then there, there's this thing that really is relevant to our industry, which are the three printing divisions and, of course, our enterprise services group. So in the printing group, we've got uh, print head people that, that sell the, the individual print heads um, par- in partnership with all sorts of OEMs, including, you know, our friends over at Sydney Bowes for their uh, inserting machines and, and their, um, the, their mailing equipment. And then we've got the Indigo people who are based out of Israel who sell these uh, really amazing offset quality liquid toner devices that are used for everything from transaction billing and direct mail all the way to posters and, and all sorts of uh, packaging solutions. And then there's the group I work for, which is the high speed inkjet uh, group. We are involved in uh, the manufacture and selling of extremely high speed uh, web fed offset. Um, web, web fed inkjet systems rather 20, 30, and 42 inches wide. And then we've got our partners over in enterprise. Probably most of people remember Extreme and Extreme is an HP company and is now part of our uh, enterprise group. So across these four groups, my gosh, when you start thinking about what's hot and what's going on, well, honestly, we'd be here for hours. But, but the cool thing that I can tell you is that every one of these groups within HP is working on uh, end-to-end solutions with, with their customers to provide 
the best, most relevant customer communication. So the really cool thing in, in our inkjet group where I spend most of my time is that we're working with customers around the world to, can I say, deliver on the promise of TransPro? I, I almost hate to use the word. Um, but we're, we're trying to deliver on that promise of doing extremely relevant, intelligent print, marrying data that is either in customer databases or data that can be gathered and uh, used to create relevant communication and then getting it down onto paper and into the mail stream in a cost-effective manner and uh, in a manner that meets the pre-quality requirements of the brand owners and the speed requirements of the folks who have all the regulatory concerns and at a, a price point that gets it into the mail stream um, that in a way that it's appropriate um, proportional to the postage cost. So uh, we're doing some sort of cool things. We've got um, great new certified inks, um, uh, UL certified, environmentally certified inks uh, in, the, in the ink check group. We are printing at amazing speeds, and, and our customers prove to us every day that uh, everything we thought we knew about the printers, we were wrong. They keep producing applications that uh, were, frankly, never on our product plan. So if you start looking at HP in general, um, what you what you see is an engineering company that's using engineering to create these really great customer communication stories. And I just happen to be lucky enough to work in the group that, that does it in print, which is kind of cool. But Pat, you know, I heard print was dead. <laughs> but indeed, you know, it, it, heard that. but it, it, it indeed it, there are statistics now that are showing that print uh, printed communications, especially when they are trans promotional in nature, uh, with more relevant and targeted messaging, is actually uh, having a kind of a comeback. Where does HP play with all of that? So the the, the thing that the statistics will will lead you to is to understand that. If all you're doing is printing in, in black on a pre-printed shell and shipping it out the door, um, the recipients recognize the lack of value in those pieces. And, and I think that those are the pieces that tend to either go away entirely or convert to electronic delivery. On the other hand, if you build a communication strategy that uh, is, uses digital color for what it's best at, and, and that is... Uh, creating relevant communication with uh, appropriate charts and graphs that provide educational and informational information, uh, make advertising or marketing offers that, that are relevant and, and use color to really highlight that. That's where we're starting to see that the tide is sort of turned and digital color as a, as a communication methodology is, is definitely coming back. Uh, a funny thing happens when you start communicating with someone solely electronically. Uh, you lose connect connectivity with that customer. And I think what we have started to see, especially in our part of the industry where we're a combination of, of regulatory uh, information that's going out into the mail stream and, and uh, direct marketing kinds of information going into the mail stream, marketers have started to come back around to this idea that it's it's not so much the, the cost of each individual um, touch point, it's the ROI on those touch points. Creating relevant communications and personalized communications. When I think of HP, I certainly do think of some of the bigger machinery, the inkjets and some of the, some of the machinery that we're all familiar with HP. But creating these kinds of relevant communications requires a certain degree of strategic direction and systems and help with the management and data to do that. What's HP doing on that end to help customers really facilitate the management and, and care and feeding of that, that process when it comes to data? Um, you do need some really great uh, software partners, and uh, we're very fortunate. Uh, first, uh, you know, HP is sort of a data powerhouse, so there are an awful lot of uh, interesting HP products and services uh, in the enterprise group that are out there to help. So, you know, we're thrilled to work with the Compart and, and Crawford Technologies and Solomar and, and pretty much everybody in the Neopost GMC space. Uh, you know, we own Extreme, but Extreme isn't always the, the solution for absolutely every situation. Uh, our Indigo team partners uh, regularly with GMC and so does our HF team and our SPS team. So from the, the standpoint of, of um, software packages that can help you do let's call it document re-engineering to make them more appropriate for today, to do multi-channel delivery. Um, you know, we partner with everybody and, and partnership is a, is a big part of our story. 
I'm here with Pat McGrew. If you're in the industry, you know her and you probably love her. She's a product evangelist with HP and a well-known author, analyst, and expert industry reporter. It's time for a quick break, but when we get back, I'm going to ask Pat about some of the other technologies and solutions that are breaking ground. What opportunities does she see on the horizon as she travels the globe? And what should folks look for as we swing into 2014? Don't go away. We'll be right back. Do you have great ideas but need expert writing skills to make them leap from the page? Do you have a great product or service that needs better exposure to new customers, potential partners, or the media? Crane Communications Group is a strategic communications agency focused on the document management and customer communications industries. Expert writing and editing, audio success stories and custom podcasts, effective media relations, and dependable and professional industry-focused expertise and service. There is no other writing and communications agency with more expertise in the industry. Find out more today at cranegroup.com. That's C-R-A-I-N-E, cranegroup.com. You're listening to the Document Strategy Podcast. Welcome back. I'm with Pat McGrew, product evangelist with HP and trusted industry analyst and reporter. Pat, you're a globetrotter. You're going everywhere, every day, every time. Uh, Really, you have your hand on the pulse of what's going on in the document and customer communications industry today. We talked about HP. What are some of the other hot trends and technologies that are on the horizon now? From a technology perspective, I think we're coming down on the side of saying, I don't have to address you, Kevin Crane, personally in every piece of mail I send to you. I'm going to get your attention just as well if I send you something that's relevant. So years ago, you and I had a conversation about why I didn't like one-to-one marketing. I really liked one-to-ten-thousand marketing. And what's happening is that here in 2013, one-to-ten-thousand, one-to-fifty-thousand marketing has re-emerged as the relevant communication technique. And we're starting to see that in Europe. I think we don't yet see it really being fully adopted in the U.S., but I think that from a comfort standpoint and from a cost-to-implement standpoint and a uh, measurable ROI standpoint, this 1 to 50,000 idea is going to start to really take off because it provides marketers what they need and doesn't drive everybody insane. We live in an era of transformational technologies. What are the transformational technologies that you see on the horizon for 2014? I think that in the end it's going to come down to the ability to access uh, access data and, and use it in a way that meets all the regulatory requirements. I mean, at the end of the day, print technology is print technology, and it will continue to get better, right? Inkjet of every variety will continue to get better. Toner will t- continue to get better. The engines will get faster. Um, I, I think that we just know that that's going to be something that will continue to grow. I think we'll we'll see software continue to get uh, easier to use. I think user interfaces are getting um, uh, getting better. I think that one thing that really has to change um, for us to really see uh, a marked improvement in the kind of communication people receive in their mailbox or their inbox, either one, is um, education of the marketing teams that uh, cause these projects to happen and uh, contracts for the design and the execution of customer communication. We see constantly uh, this, this sort of interesting battle between uh, print service providers and the agencies who are advising their customers. Um, the, the folks who live in that agency world often don't understand the capabilities uh, that we have to create relevant customer communication. They don't understand actually just how easy it can be to create relevant communication with very few data points and not breaking any laws. So. I, I think that what we're going to start to see is um, uh, if we're smart in our industry and we educate people, I think it'll come back to benefit us. And I, I'm starting to see glimmers of it, so I, I remain hopeful. That's Pat McGrew. She's a product evangelist at HP and a well-known industry analyst and reporter. Pat, thanks for being on the show today. It's time for another short break, but when we get back, we'll be joined by Roger Kay, columnist at Forbes.com and an expert at transformative business technologies. We'll be talking about mobile communications and digital endpoints. So stick around. We'll be right back with this episode of the Document Strategy Podcast. 
Since 1995, Crawford Technologies has been the driving force behind high-volume transactional customer communications for many of the world's top organizations. Transform print streams to and from virtually any format, alter, enhance, modify, or add advertising to transactional documents without application changes, and archive and store and manage customer communications in ways that save money, build efficiencies, and enable new opportunities. Visit CrawfordTech.com for more information. That's CrawfordTech.com, award-winning software for high-volume transactional customer communications. You're listening to The Document Strategy Podcast. The Document Strategy Podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Visit audibletrial.com slash document for a free audiobook download and a free trial membership. Get your free download at audibletrial.com slash document. Roger K., welcome to the broadcast. In your column at Forbes.com, you talk a lot about digital endpoints or simply just endpoints. What is a digital endpoint, and how have endpoints transformed the way we communicate today? The term digital is sort of redundant with respect to endpoints because the understanding of an endpoint is it is a single user device with a human interface and an IP address, an internet protocol address. Now, people want to call them digital endpoints, I suppose, because there might be other sorts of endpoints. But let me explain why I even thought of using the term endpoint. So if we go back in history about a decade, at the time, the PC was pretty much the only way people got on the internet. So, you know, it was sort of like, there was this thing called a PC, which you thought of as an internet access device. But I imagined around 2005, that there really ought to be a larger category that could take into account endpoints that weren't necessarily PCs. Now, at the time, there really weren't any, but I said, all right, we need to call it something, and I had thought of various different terms for it, and I thought endpoint was convenient. So that's actually how I named my company, Endpoint Technologies Associates. Two years after I formed the company, Apple brought out the iPhone and kind of ratified my idea that there was this other major way to get at the internet, which turned out to be the smartphone. And so began the era of endpoints or digital endpoints, if you like. Really, what you're saying is back in the old days, in the beginnings of the internet, it was really a device-centric sort of model. In other words, people just had one PC to access the internet. But now with smartphones and tablets, people have a bunch of different alternative ways. In fact, you might have two or three devices, maybe more, in, available right. to you to connect at any time, at really any kind of where. So, right. So it's not really about a device-centric model anymore. It's more person-centric. Can you describe that? Sure. Okay, so in the old days, you went to your PC because you wanted to get on the Internet. So there's this sort of idea of you are conforming to the device, and it had its own idiosyncrasies. You know, you had the sort of control, all delete, and other strange things that you had to do in order to communicate with the Internet. But as soon as you have two devices, just, more, just a smartphone and a PC, already there's this problem of, you know, who's doing what to whom. And so right away, you want both of those devices in some sense pointing at you. So rather than you pointing at your PC, now you have two devices pointing at you. So what does it mean to be pointing at you? Well, it would be like this. If you were uh, listening to a podcast on your, um, your iPhone and uh, you got somewhere in it, but you arrived someplace and you put it on pause or something. Well, Ideally, when you sat down at your PC and opened up the same podcast, it would resume exactly where you stopped on your phone. So that can work in some services these days. But the demonstration there is, in some sense, both devices were keeping track of you in a certain sense, and they knew where you were and so adjusted themselves to you. So this is person-centric. Now. That's just a rudimentary view, just two devices. And in fact, most of that was about file synchronization. So you, you, know, you changed a file, you made a PowerPoint, you, know, you, you sent it up to the cloud, and then when your other device logged in, it received from the cloud the later version, and, and now that was up to date too. So that sort of synchronization is, is largely part of it. So that begins the story of the cloud and how the cloud becomes an arbiter of your identity which exists on essentially any of these devices. 
So what you're saying is that the internet and the cloud is really evolving a, a network of not just computers and people, but of things as well, these new endpoints. If you move from two devices to more devices, you've got you know living room uh, entertainment centers, you've got uh, work PCs, home PCs, you've got gaming systems, perhaps, uh, and, and smartphones and tablets. So if you keep adding to that other things, uh, people have started thinking about what are all these other things that you might be connected to, and they've, there are a few obvious categories for the consumer. One is the house, and the other is the car. Now, within the house, there are refrigerators, washers, dryers, toasters, thermostats. And now you can see how it'll get even more obscure when you begin to add in things like Bluetooth beacons, things that can be put in stores. Uh, they can be put basically anywhere in houses. And they can do things like location detection. If you show up with a, your smartphone, it can say, oh, that smartphone, which has Bluetooth enabled, is something that I recognize. It's the owner of this home, perhaps. Um, I should do something on his behalf. Or if you're in a store, it says, oh, this is customer number 73. I know him. He likes whatever. I should remind him that we've got a promotion on that object in aisle four. So. What I'm now beginning to describe is the cloud as the sort of arbiter of all these different devices and these devices talking to each other, which is also beginning to happen. And the world is becoming more complex, but I see it evolving in such a wonderful way because we've gone from having one device to having multiple devices. And now there are guest devices where you might just use something while you're in a hotel, for example, and it's temporarily yours, but not yours to take home. Um, and so on. So all of this is coordinated by the cloud on your behalf. And it's not just a matter of synchronizing your files anymore. Now it's a matter of understanding who you are and what you're trying to do and trying in some ways to anticipate that and make your life easier. Roger, where do you see the opportunity for businesses today with all of this? Well, there are many of them, but you have to be careful about being too intrusive. Right. So part of this is a customer needs to opt in to sharing knowledge about themselves in order to receive benefits. There are people who really like that idea. They say, fine, you can have my Facebook login or whatever. I'm, you know, you can know who I am and what I what I like and what I do and where I've been. And and, you know, pitch me. Tell me what you got. I'm interested in that stuff. I want it targeted toward me. I want you to know about my demographic and my tastes. But some people might find that kind of creepy. I mean, how do you know the difference between someone that's an advocate for that right. and someone who's against it? Absolutely. So that's where you need an element of opt-in. So you can't just sort of dump people into this bath. You have to say, we would like to take you on this marvelous journey, and here's what it involves, and we want you to be fully aware of that and invite you to come along with us. But we want you to come voluntarily. We're not going to drag you in there. And if you don't handle your privacy policy that way, then bad things happen. As you point out, people suddenly are creeped by the idea that they are apparently sharing things that they didn't mean to share. Roger, with all these endpoints, I mean, we're talking about digitally connected cars and, you know, your refrigerators and more and right. more aspects of a person's life is going to be part of this digital endpoint kind of mix. I mean, should folks be worried about it? I mean, let's face it, major chunks of information are going to be part of this, you know, yeah. and embedded in these computers that talk to each other. Well, or, or is it just an inevitable landscape of the way that the world is going to be now? Well, it's it's not an easy uh thing to answer. So, for example, I've written in the past about um, what I call the digital object, which is you represented in cyberspace. So that object is composed of little elements. So it could be your your Facebook login could be one element, a photo of you could be another and so on. Uh, and including, by the way, your bank accounts and other things, all of those things end up being part of your digital object. The, the thing about digital objects is they never get smaller. So information accumulates, but it doesn't go away. I mean, you could try to expunge things. As you know, it's easy to make a copy of tremendous files very quickly. And so once someone scooped up a copy, you know, whatever that is, is, is kept permanently. And so you can assume that it exists. So 
I think a piece that I wrote was called People Who Live in Glass Houses Should Expect Others to Peer In. And it basically just describes that. You know, if you're really putting a lot of information about yourself up on the Internet, and not even you personally posting, but just by transacting on the Internet, you're creating digital footprints, which someone else could follow if they cared about it. And those things are all accumulating as part of your digital object. So um, over time, that could put people in jeopardy. But there's another side to it, which is intriguing. Supposing that being you was something that nobody else could do. So let's say that they can't steal your identity because your digital object is in some way welded to you, like, for example, through your fingerprint or maybe through multiple biometric means. Now, if I can be known as who I am, I'm ready to do business. No one can steal that from me. No one, you know, in other words, part of making this digital object thing work is that you are truly you and no one else is you. Document-strategy.com. That's where you'll find everything you need to design a document strategy with real world benefits, including my book, Designing a Document Strategy, now available in ebook format. It's the same book that's sold in over 30 countries and includes a five phase document strategy design model to guide your efforts and ensure your success. Designing a Document Strategy, now available in ebook format. It's only $5.94 at Amazon. Sure, you can look it up there, or you can just go to document-strategy.com. That's document-strategy.com, your real-world resource for document strategy design. I've been speaking with Roger K. Roger, thanks for returning once again to be on the broadcast today. You've got a column at Forbes.com, but where else can people find you to learn more? Well, uh, NDPTA is my uh, website. Uh, which is kind of hard to understand, but if you think of it, if you kind of squint your eyes, it's really Endpoint Technologies Associates. And that's where you'll see, for example, some of my uh, media stuff, my Forbes column, and some things about the company and how I advise my clients about how to deal with this. That'll do it for this episode of the Document Strategy Podcast. If you'd like to contact us here at the broadcast, or maybe you'd like to be a guest on the show, or suggest a guest, or even become a sponsor of the broadcast, just go to document-strategy.com and you can reach us there. If you want to reach me directly, send an email to kevin at document-strategy.com. Otherwise, join us next time when we continue to explore methods, technologies, and techniques to design real-world strategies that result in bottom-line benefits. I'm your host, Kevin Crane. Thanks for listening. Document-Strategy.com, your real-world resource for document strategy design.